Question, do the ends always justify the means? For so long, fans have asked, what is Tariq's true motivation for doing what he does? Is it possible that his reason for being and doing have been visible all along? Is Tariq's story the opposite of ghosts and he truly can become the phoenix that rises from the ashes? What's going on everyone? Just be here and I'm breaking down the latest episode of Power Book 2 Ghost Season 4 Episode 2 titled To Thine Own Self which is from a ancient quote saying to thine own self be true. We're digging into the biggest parts of this episode right now. Let's go. This episode starts off with us seeing who Detective Carter actually is and how he moves. We see him making a bus that seizes the Russian supply and he gets the intel on what happened at Stansfield with Tariq and Jr. and automatically starts putting it all together. Then we get a play-by-play -play of all the main characters where we see Tariq and Braden now living together with life back at Stansfield being broke after being cut off by Noma. And so Braden is still suspended from Stansfield, but is staying with Tariq because, quite frankly, he's cut off from his family and has nowhere to go. And he's also working a new job that he got with his cousin. They're both feeling the hurt of having no money, which is crazy, uh, in my opinion, because with all that money that they were making when they were flipping those bricks, as well as working at a financial firm, they have no sort of financial savings plan or education within finance at all. So it's crazy. But Tariq being back at square one has to take on three different jobs on campus in order to meet the student aid requirements. Then we flip over to some of the Tejadas. We see Kane and Drew shaking down the streets, trying to see who shot Monet. But Kane is really the only one who's out of the loop because it was, as we know, Drew and Diana who conspired with Tariq to get it done where it was inevitably Tasha who pulled the trigger. Then we flip over to Diana and we see her at a local store getting a pregnancy test, where it is inevitably revealed further on in the episode that when she goes to the doctor, she gets confirmation that she is in fact pregnant. I mean, I didn't see that one coming. Wonder how this is going to play out though. I mean, the overall story, how is this going to tie into everything else? I'm not I'm not sure, guys, but let me know what you think inside the comments. Then we flip over to Monet and we're introduced to a new character, Janet Stewart, who's played by Golden Brooks. Some of us may know her from TV show Girlfriends. And she is Monet's cousin and helping her through her recovery and physical therapy. We get to see how close that they really are in this episode. And we also get flashbacks to a younger Monet, her cousin, Lorenzo, and baby Kane to get better insight on in how she came to be. This is also a reflection of the weight of Monet's decisions bearing down on her conscience after being near death and confronted by the literal ghosts of her past. She and Lorenzo apparently struggled early on in their relationship while he was trying to make moves on the streets for them as a young G. So we see her show that she can be more street smart and probably always has been and also has the ability to think faster on her feet when she is pulled over by a cop with her cousin with her in the car and puts the piece that she had in the glove box in Baby Kane's car seat right away. She even managed to get product for Lorenzo to push for them to make ends meet, to which he gets upset about initially because it really shows that he couldn't make the real moves. I guess this is probably also them emphasizing how Lorenzo really wasn't all that and it was really Monet who was running things and got the family to where they are now. And she is the real head of the family at this stage, having to do whatever it takes to survive. But what do you guys think about this whole flashback sequence? Does it help you empathize more with the character of Monet? Let me know inside the comments. Also, what do you guys think of the younger actors for them? I think they did a pretty good job, at least with the one who played younger Monet. She definitely looked like her. Now with Noma, we see her spotting an opportunity to move in and supply the market left behind by the Russians Connect after the seizure by Detective Don Carter's team. And she wants to now go ahead and meet with them. So she begins to suspect during this time that Obi might not 100% be her lieutenant the way she is used to him being anymore and that he seems a bit distracted. Keep in mind, Noma is smart and she's always several steps ahead. And I'm guessing that this is probably putting something into play in the background with her to deal with him at some point. Hmm. What do you guys think? 
Let me know in the comments. Over on to Davis McLean, we see that he's down on his luck and trying to get reinstated officially with his law license that ultimately in this episode, after a review with the bar, gets suspended. And his practice yet still seems to be somewhat active, but his team is working out of various places, including his own home. Now, we see that he gets paid to visit by Detective Carter, who wants him to flip on his clients like Tariq and the Tejadas in order to get his law license reinstated because he has favor with people at the bar. I don't know how, but apparently he does. But Davis pretty much tells him to get lost. But yet, I personally don't think this is going to go away just like that. Do you think that it's possible that he can make Davis flip? Hmm. Or is he a real G? Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. Now back at Stansfield for today's Saved by the Bell lesson of the day. Well, why don't we begin today's lesson? On which is the exploration of whether evil is a necessary component of successful leadership which is a psychological exploration into the motivation as to why people decide to do whatever it takes to get to the top and whether or not what they do to get there can be considered good or bad if they are ultimately successful in that and by whom it can be considered good or bad. So it's more of a deeper situation than that, but it helps to ground the episode in what to expect as it relates to several characters, but mainly Tariq. Now, Effie, she truly shines in this episode. We see her striving for a better life by any means possible, applying for the engineering program at Stansfield, and also stepping up with Noma in order to get things back under control. She ends up being the mediator between Noma and the Russians after agreeing to do it because she also needed a bigger cut of the profits to pay for the engineering program that she wants to get in. Now, Effie is a character. We know her. She's motivated by getting ahead at all costs to secure a better life for herself, which is just like Tariq in that regard. And she ends up mediating and bringing the Russians back to the table who were initially turned off from working with Noma in the first place. But after bringing them to the meetup with Noma and for some reason, Monet makes a surprise appearance asserting her dominance or trying to see what's going on. But the problem with that is the Russians have some sort of previous history with Monet and they are turned off by all of it because now it looks funny and might be some sort of setup or whatever it is. So guns are pulled out and threats are made, but ultimately they all leave and Monet passes out due to the stress of what's going on in her head. Effie manages to get Kane to come with her and they broker a new deal with the Russians to supply them with clean military grade weapons on the condition that Effie is the point person for all their dealings moving forward. But you know what? I'm curious to see how this now is going to play out. It's good to see Effie stepping up a little bit more. Hold on real quickly. You guys want to see something crazy? Over 99% of you guys that watch my content are not subscribed. So I'm asking real quickly, if you don't mind, just hit the like button and hit subscribe real quickly. I love to keep on giving this content to you guys and lets me know that people actually are interested. Feel free to do that, man. Really appreciate it a lot. Would help me out a long way in growing my small channel. Thanks. Now back to the video. Back at Noma's place, Kane lets her know that he and Effie made this play and it worked out all in their favor, to which she is not too happy about because it looks like them making moves without her. But she then gets intrigued by him in the moment when he was able to anticipate exactly what she was about to say to him before taking him out for his insubordinates. She sends Obi away then, offers Kane a drink, and you can see she gives him the free guys to where Kane's like, say, what? I was like, okay, buddy. I mean, do what you gotta do, I guess. I like it because I think Kane can handle his own, but I wonder if they do in fact go in the direction between he and Noma, how will that affect he and Effie? Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. Now, after Detective Don Carter pulls up on Tariq in this episode and lets him know that he's not buying the whole school shooter story and he knows all about his family and who his father was, etc., Tariq stands on business. And I gotta say, I'm glad that they pointed out some of the cues in which Tariq manages to stay so calm under pressure. He mentions how in reading Tariq, he sees how he keeps his breathing calm and his heart rate down in order to not get tripped up and say something he'll regret, which is a really good observation. Dawn lets him know that he's coming for him and that his mother is in trouble with witness protection. Tariq goes to find Tasha not long after this conversation in another town somewhere 
where she has a new identity and is working for a retail store. Now, if my eyes don't deceive me, we can also see what appears to be a very pregnant Aturi in this shot who gave birth a while back, which they did a good job of covering up her pregnancy by shooting her from the waist up. Tariq is upset to see the condition that his life and his mother's life is taken and again feels responsible for all their woes. He lets Brayden know that despite what he said before about wanting a normal college student life, he isn't for being broke and they need to find a way back into the game by any means possible. I can't eat! I'm broke, nigga! I'm broke! And you got the power to change But there might actually be an opportunity to do so because there's a new character that was introduced at Stansfield whom Brayden meets named Elle. And she mentions to him that, that she was looking for a new dealer. So we'll see where this goes. Tariq finally gets a win in this episode, which was a funny one. Um, he ends up stealing his car back from 2-Bit, who took it from him in season 3 and gave him the lemon that he was driving. Which I, I thought this was hilarious. One of the things about this scene was I think this also shows Tariq committing to being that quote-unquote phoenix that rises from the ashes and doing what he must and whatever it takes to be successful no matter what, which goes back to their classroom lesson. The character he's always been is that character who always does what he has to do to get out of every jam. We know him to not stay down for too long. He's the kind of character that strategizes, makes the play, and then he executes. But how he gets out of the situation with knowing Tasha shot Monet, especially after in this episode where Monet confronts him about whatever he knows, yeah, this is going to be interesting. Some people are forecasting that Tasha is going to catch a bullet this season, but I don't know. How do you guys think this is going to play out? Because it's going to be interesting for sure to see how they all tie this up together. All in all, amazing episode, guys. My personal opinion is that I think that it was a very grounded episode. Didn't feel too Grand Theft Auto, in my opinion. And shout out to the whole cast and crew for the amazing work that they're doing on the show, man. And also shout out to Brett Mahoney, the executive producer and showrunner of Power Book 2 Ghost, who showed me some love on my Twitter page today when I tweeted about the episode. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode and about this breakdown. If you feel like you received any value from this breakdown, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Would appreciate it a lot. Until next time, peace.